Good day, lords and ladies, and welcome back to our well post the final the final like you know talk base about yeah. Halo C E I guess. Oh yeah, well probably the post commentary like little short video that we tend to do at the end of our campaign of our co op campaigns about the games we play. Um, and this is for combat, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition. Um, but first thing before we start ranking the maps, um, the Frax, how did you find? Combat, or sorry, Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary Edition, in your opinion. So, it's worth knowing that I was basically playing with the old graphics, so that obviously, like, colors the experience a little bit, but yeah. in some ways, you have to really appreciate, like, how old this game basically is, and how, like, you know, good it basically was back in the day. Yeah. It was very groundbreaking for its time. Um, the graphics help, like, when I, because I, I played for the game campaign with the modern graphics, or the remastered graphics, it managed to add a lot more spice to it, to be honest, because the base game can be rather bland without it. And hard to basically see what you're doing, too. Yes, true. But I thought it was a... I thought it was a, a nicely done and tasteful remastering, because you don't always get those when people go back and remaster old classic games. Yeah, usually you find that the remasters that are done well, like, say, for example, Command & Conquer, that basically has, like, you know, a nod, basically, to the old, like, graphics with, like, you know, you can basically switch on the fly like you can in Halo. Yeah. And then you have games like uh, Final Fantasy VII, which are just, like, you know, remaking the game. Well, yes. I mean, but to be honest, that that's more sort of a reimagining of uh, the well, Final Fantasy remake. Like, if you, like, a really bad example of a remake done poorly would be how they handled Warcraft. Um, yeah, it's reforged. Blitzkin. Yeah, with reforged, because that was an absolute car crash of a remaster. Um, well, this was very tastefully done, in my opinion. Um, and it just brought a lot of stuff back into the game, like a lot of the achievements you could do in the skulls. They redid the skull system, which was nice, because you didn't, in the original base game, you had to pick up a skull, then restart the game for the skull to take effect. So if you wanted to get all the skulls active, which I don't believe it was possible, you could only get like ninety, like nine out of the ten skulls, or however many it was, you couldn't get the last skull to activate because mm. it, it was. Um, I'm trying to remember. It was it was considered to be like nigh on impossible to do. Um, but now you can have all the skulls activated and play through the game in one go, which is very challenging. Um, but let's let's discuss. What? The missions? The missions. That's the main thing. Um, so if we... Let us first pick what we can... like. You say the first three that you think that are your favourite missions before X, and then I will say my 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 preferred three that are um, the best. Well, I? actually, how about we just go from the worst to from the worst three? Oh, okay, that's, 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 okay, let's start. So from the, the very worst map... I think we know which one we're going to go with, yeah. Yeah. So, the library. The library, as you can see, I've picked it here. Um, it's a pretty... just Even with them redoing it in a remaster, yeah. it's still bad. Yeah, it's... it's The problem is, it's a map that is monotonous. It all relatively looks the same. And it is just... It gets dull really quickly. Um, so, I should probably note, like, you know, the sort of, like, you know, feeling of this map, basically, the library. Um... Basically, when the developers were making the library, the purpose of the flood basically in this like map is to show the basically show that they're basically like you know overwhelmingly just like you know numbers and stuff like that. They yeah. like you know just keep coming, and that's like one of like the sort of like you know feelings of this map because it's basically just they just keep coming and they get boring over and over and over again at some point. So it becomes monotonous. Yeah. It's one of the issues that the flood have in the basic in the original combat Halo combat fold, in my honest opinion, is that. Um, they were basically very, like, once you fought them a couple of times, they became very a generic thing, which was that they didn't have as many tactics as the Covenant, and they only ever used... It was the thing, was like, especially on the higher difficulties, their weapon selection is, like, pretty much, like, A or B. They're either using shotguns or assault rifles most of the time, or they're using plasma rifles if they're using, uh, if they're using, um, Covenant stuff. So, or these pistols. Oh, yeah, or pistols. But the thing is that they become very monotonous and very sort of cutie cutter, cutie cutter ish, um, sorry, cutie, cookie cutter ish, um, a foe, and they become quite boring, especially on library, 
on keys, um, which is when you can see them in the next Halo game, in Halo 2, the floods become a lot more... The developers put a lot more effort into putting a lot more variety into the flood. Um, and they also on, designed a map better for them as well. Yeah, and they added a lot more variety of the of the forms that you fight. Um, but yeah, library worst map. Uh, we both agree, library is probably the worst map. Followed by, it's a hard it's a hard choice. But I'm probably going to say my personal opinion is that the next worst map is probably uh, keys. Yeah, keys. Uh, um, it's keys. I just I think it's. It's basically true from reconciliation. It's the base. It is pretty much the truth from reconciliation map, just with flood, and it's just a slog. Especially so, if you're, sorry. We should probably actually note one of the reasons that keys is bad. It's because it comes after two betrayals too. Yeah. So you you go for a long map in two betrayals where the flood and the covenant are you all slugging it out, and then you go to keys where it's you versus the flood versus the covenant slugging it out, but just in a tiny map. Also. This is one of the things you all have to remember as well. By this point in the game, from library onwards, um, you do no longer see any human faction. Like, there's no marines, there's nothing. It's just you, It's just you, um, the Covenant and the Flood for the rest of the game. And a Sentinel sometimes. Yeah. But it becomes very monotonous. Um, also, just the infinite respawning Flood in keys is just really... Especially on the higher difficulties, it's just annoying and combined with the high level elites that you get the commandos the spec ops elites that are literally so grenade happy it's unbelievable uh, no i will like you know give them like some credit because you can t technically skip past like most yeah. of them you can you can skip past a good chunk of keys but the fact is the fact that most people skip parts of keys indicates that it's not fun to play yep so we have not we have the 10th place is library Ninth place is keys, followed up very quickly, in my personal opinion, by truth and reconciliation. Mm. Um, I guess that's probably a good pick. I probably yeah. would probably rate this a little bit higher myself, but um, we'll we'll talk about this map first. Yeah, personally, the reason I dislike truth and reconciliation is that it's not that it's a bad map. It's I the problem is that it's really easy to have to restart. Um, because of where they put, especially I found myself when playing it for a normal, there are some areas where um, it's really easy to either miss the healing kits where they put them, or for the healing kits not to show up from time to time. I've also, the anniversary graphics too. Yeah, so it's one of those things where it's really easy to get far into Truth and Reconciliation and just have like no health. I pretty much went through the entire, I, when I was playing it for on my own, I went through it on normal, from getting on board on board the ship to getting to keys without a single healing pack and I had one HP by the end of it and I was literally checkpointing all the way. Which is not fun. So I will note that there is some good things about um Truth and Reconciliation though, just to throw it out there, because yeah. one of the good things to know is that this does have that sort of sniper rifle like, you know, sequence at the start. Yeah, that is the good that's a good section, I will agree. And you also basically have to fight the hunters for the first time, which is like also a good point about it. Yeah, I, I like that. Getting up to tr getting up to the carrier is fine, but once you're on the carrier, I find that it degrades the actual map. Well, it degrades eventually because like, the first part of the carrier where you basically find a silent, like you know, stealthy, like you know, a uh, sword swinging guys. That's kind of fun. Yeah. Though it can get a bit, especially, but though you you and I both said that. Though it is fun on the hard difficulties, it becomes an absolute slog because you're yeah you're redoing it so many times. Uh, that's, the, that's the only bad thing because basically you realize oh shoot these guys are actually like you know really difficult at this point. Yeah, and you don't really have good enough weapons to deal with. Unfortunately, their shields are like pudding. So yeah, so as long as you basically know they're there. So tenth for me, tenth for me is library. Ninth is um, keys. Follow. You say um, you say like the eighth is basically like truth from reconciliation. Yeah, truth from reconciliation for me. I would say that for me, the eighth for me would be two betrayals. I would put. I was going to put. I was going to put two betrayals as my seventh pick. So let's uh, talk about it now. Yeah. Um, I think two betrayals is a nice map. It introduces basically the weak freeway encounter between you, the flood, and the covenant. 
Um, it's a night. The only downside with it is that it is a long map. It's the longest map in the entire game. Um, well, it's, it's basically you saw on control run backwards. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I find, I think it's a good map. I think it's better than Truth and Reconciliation myself, though there are some parts of it that are unpleasant, like when you're having to fly an aircraft for a tunnel where the where the AI has rocket launchers and really unearing accuracy is it frustrating. It's probably worth knowing that the thing about two portrayals. Um, if you play on lower difficulties, this is actually a pretty fun map because basically you get to see all the chaos from like the flood and like the covenant fighting each other. Yeah. But as soon as you get to like the higher difficulties and like you know every like little explosion you basically kill you, it's, it becomes like a sort of chore. Yeah. You end up having to really skirt a lot of stuff when you're doing it. To, um, the two portrayals on harder difficulties. There's but, also the fact that the aircraft aren't that fun to fly in this one either. Nah. But that's uh, that's my opinion. So for me, it's tenth is library, ninth is keys, eighth is truth and reconciliation, seventh is the the two betrayals. Um, what is your sixth? My sixth. Um, that's actually a hard one. Um, well, I I'd probably I say the more. Mine... I'd probably say like okay, the more. Go. Sorry, my apologies. I'd probably say like the more. Alright, well, I think we're going to diverge a little bit at this point because basically for me, the like 10th is basically like, you know, the library. Yeah. The 9th is easily keys, and then to the 8th, I'd probably say two betrayals. Mm. I'd probably say that, like, you know, for my 7th, it'd probably be like the Pillars of Autumn, the very first map. Oh, yeah, true. It's the tutorial map, but it's a little bit too easy. Yeah, true. It's harder on single player than it is in co op. The thing with co op, co op makes a lot of the maps a lot easier. Yeah, but even on single player, yeah. Pillars of Arm is basically you're fighting against basic elites and basic grunts, and if you're playing it at all, then it's like you know not really that fun. Yeah, true. But no. Well, for those who don't know, Pillars of Arm is basically the first map where you're basically introduced to the game. Yeah. And basically, it's like a glorified tutorial, but it's like you know very very easy to say the least. Yeah, I was I was considering of putting like. I was going to put the tutorial. I was going to put Pillars of Autumn as the fifth map. Sixth would have been more followed by Pillars of Autumn at fifth for me. All right, so let's talk about the Ma, I guess. Yeah, uh, like I know it's an iconic map, but like the first like two thirds of it is just a slog. Um, I, it's it's a it's a good map. The the ending boss section can be engaging if a bit frustrating with how they did it, and then you have the iconics like basically. Car chase. Warthog run. Yeah, Warthog run. So it's a good, solid map. There's no, like, real, in my opinion, any, like, real frustrations with it. It's not too long. It's not too overly, like, bending all over the place. The boss section at the end can be frustrating, but as long as you know what to do, it's relatively easy to get it done. Mm. The only really bad parts of it is basically the infinitely respawning flood. Yeah, and where you basically have to fight the coven, like you actually can't run away from it. You have to basically fight them. They can be like, you know, really yeah. happy, and that's like you know, annoying. But yeah, I think for me it would be sixth would be the more fifth would be Pillars of Autumn because it's it's a good map, but it's not it's a good map, it's an iconic map, but it's not a great map. And for me, the fourth one would probably be um, Halo, the second map. Yeah. Probably the fourth one would be for me Halo. Maybe Halo or Assault on the Control Room. One of those two. I can't I can't make up my mind. I probably have Assault on the Control Room um yeah. ahead of like Halo myself, so Yeah, true. I'd say so on I'd say Halo for fourth, because it's it's an iconic map. It's one that a lot of people have played, because I believe it was also one of the demo maps you could play was Halo. Mm. Um But it's it still seems to, it still shares the same issue that Halo had like not Halo but um, Pillars of Autumn has, which is that it's just you versus the Covenant on a v relatively like linear map. Um, well, it is it is a little bit sort of open in that you can basically do what you want to when you save Marines later on, but yeah, you do retread across a lot of ground though. Yeah. Not bad, but not the greatest map. No, it's good for like it, it's, it's, this. Is actually be a good introduction map, I think. If like you know, yeah. they got rid of pillars of autumn. Yeah. Um, third for me would be assault on the control room. Good um, map. It's an iconic map. It's a. It's the. It's also a big map, and you. It's a good one to get through. Also, where you get introduced to a lot of the vehicles. 
Yeah. Um, like pillars of arm, I, I, or like not pillars of arm, but you know, uh, salt in the control room. Yeah. Probably it's worth mentioning. It's like probably the longest map. Like you know, if you, if you like don't consider like you know, two betrayals the longest map. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, going through it, you basically get to see a whole lot of different type of combat in it. Like you get to see stealth mechanics. You get to see like you know, the tank, the air like flying the banshee, piloting the ghost. Uh, well, or, if you get to Banshee fast enough, yes. Yeah. Um, also, you get to see, like, the full sort of combat. And you also have the Marines. This is the thing I like about Assault in the Control Rooms 3rd, is that you get the Marines are still here. Like, yep. Assault on the Control Room is literally, I believe, it's the second to last map where you have human allies. And the last is Guilty Spark. Um, yeah, and then afterwards they just all disappear, which in the law isn't um, isn't really explained. So, second map, it's a hard one. Personally, I'm going to put. And this may be slightly controversial. I'm going to put the um, silent tarkographer as um, my second choice. Um, Not a bad choice. It's a really good map. It's a really iconic map. I like it a lot. Um, but. My first pick is basically a lot more atmospheric. One of the things that I think Silent Cantographer does suffer from is that it does suffer from a lack of like atmosphere. It's a great map, and you're coming in over the sea and everything, and it's fantastic, and you land on the beach, and you just, you're doing stuff. But then as the mission goes on, it's sort, you basically are just doing a ginormous like loop of the island. Well, it's a sandbox map. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a great map. I like it a lot. But I think that number one for the original um, original franchise for me has to be 343 Guilty Spark. Yep. Definitely uh, for me as well, just for a simple reason that it's so atmospheric as well as, like, you know, yeah. a great introduction to the Flood. Great introduction to the Flood. The atmosphere is fantastic. It's the last time you engage with humans as well, a Well, you human, engage with humans. You engage with humans as a human, as, as, as allies. Um, it's also nice to be where the Flood are there, but they're not, they haven't outstayed their welcome, as it were. Well, and the thing about Guilty Spark is that it basically slowly introduces them, like, you know, yeah. you actually get the feeling that these guys are actually an overwhelming threat. And then yeah. you basically get to see them, and, like, you see these little Flood form, infection forms coming at you, and it's like, what the heck are these? Shoot them! Yeah. And, it's compl and it also completely flips the game on its head, because up until that point, it's a normal first-person shooter, and then it goes basically shooter horror straight away, which is really nice. So, and like the atmosphere, especially on the remastered version, it's really the map is really, really quite atmospheric on the remastered version. Yeah, it's worth knowing. Basically, the thing about like you know, three four three guilty spark is that's not just all tell. There's a lot of show as well. Yeah, it's very. It's like a lot of swamp, a lot of like environmental stuff. It's very, very. I like it. I think, in my personal opinion, 343 Guilty Spark is the best map in the original game. Alright, I guess I'll go through my top 10. So, yeah. my, uh, my, my, like, you know, number 10 would be the library, of course. Yeah. After the library, of course, comes keys, because it's keys, it's not that great. No. Um, think about what basically comes after, like, you know, that is, I think, two betrayals, as I basically said, because. It's just like, you know, such a chaotic, like, you know, mess at, like, at the hard difficulties that, like, you know, it's not fun to play. Yeah, true. And I was never really a big fan of the Banshees and, like, how the Ops were operated, so... Yeah, good point. They weren't for me. Once you basically get to those, like, you know, three out of the way, um... As I said, probably around that point, I basically throw, throw in, like, you know, um... The, like, you know, Pillar of Autumn, because... It's a tutorial map. I really don't care about it myself. Yeah, true. Um... Basically, the thing about it, about like you know Halo CE is that it's probably fun the first time you basically play, and for like new players who don't know how to play a first-person shooter, but for uh, returning players at this point, it's one of those maps that you like realize just how easy it basically was because it's just like you know little like you know um, little grunts and like you know the elites, and they're like not that tough basically to fight. So like you know, it's like just like yeah, let's play to get to the rest of, rest of the mission. Yeah. So it's like ugh. Um, after like that though. It's a good question, like, what's next? I probably would say, like, you know, for myself, that, like, you know, um, I would have, like, the Maw being, like, you know, the sixth map, as, like, you did. Mm. Just for a simple reason that, like, you know, the Maw is basically a fun map, basically, for, like, you know, the Warhawk run. Um, the fact that you're basically fighting against, like, the, you know, the, the super, like, you know, Covenant and, like, you know, the Sentinels and the Flood. But it's also really, um, like, you know, 
the, they're, su they're super grenade happy, so there's a, always a good chance they're going to blow you up. Yeah. And there's a lot of sections where it's very hard to basically avoid the grenades or like kill the coven, so it gets like, you know... Um, or the fuel. like no really... Or the no fuel guns, good, like, yeah. Tactics, basically, yeah. Plus the fact that like... Plus the fact that nearly every grunt is running around on higher difficulties with fuel rod guns. Yeah. But the thing is, like, you can't really use tactics to, like, you know, go around them and, like, you know, smack them in the back or anything. You have to basically go ahead and fight them head on or run away from them, so... Yeah. That's, like, you know, the thing about that map. I, I don't mind the fact that you have to run through, like, battles and stuff like that, but if you fight them directly and have to, I, I sort of wish there was, like, a tactics basically to get around them, but there isn't any, so... No. It's just, like, you know, skill and... You, uh, no skill, you die, basically. Yeah. So, that's what my sixth map at this point, so... Um, probably for my fifth map, though, I would probably say it would be Halo. Mm. Halo is like, you know, as you basically said, it's a very fun map, but um, it's also like a map that's like, you know, uh, there's not a whole lot basically to say here. It, it, it introduces like, you know, the drops and the jackals and, you know, does like a good tutorial type of job for you. But for the most part, it's basically just like, you know, it's an easy map. Yeah, it's basically and... the follow up intro map, isn't it? It's basically st it's part two of the intro. It's where yes, you get it's tutorial number yeah. two. Yes, you get introduced to like the sniper rifle, the rocket launcher. Um, the Warthog, the Jackals, as you said, Cloaked Enemies, that kind of thing. The Banshee... Uh, cloaked Enemies actually come later, but... Um... Uh, yeah, um, like, the, the Banshee turns up there as well. But yeah, anyways, for the most part, like, you know, the thing about Halo is that it's like, you know, it's basically mm -hmm. tutorial continue for the most part. Yeah. That's your fifth anyways, one. What that's my fifth one. Getting to my fourth would probably be, at this point, like, two from Reconciliation, so... Yeah. I actually didn't really like, you know, mind you from reconciliation too much, but it's difficulty. It's like, it's only like really like the hangar basically bit where it's really, really hard at that point. But the rest is like, you know, you get introduced to like, you know, sniper rifle, you get introduced to like the uh, hunters, you get introduced to like the stealth, like, you know, swordsmen, and eventually you get introduced, I think, to like the guys with like, you know, um, stealth, like, you know, pistol, like, you know, assault rifles and stuff like that, or yeah. the cut and form basically, passive rifle. For the most part, I think Trip from Re Reconciliation is actually a good, good map. It just needs to be softened in a few areas, make it like a little bit more easier and have like more checkpoints. Yeah. But for the most part, it was like it was a good, good enough like you know experience for me to basically enjoy it and say it's like you know top like you know five or four or whatever. Yeah. So you're after two, from... yeah. So, so your fourth pick. What's your fourth pick, Creek? Assault in the control room easily. Yeah. So I'll note that I'm not really a big fan of like the vehicles in like a in like a Halo CE just to throw it out there. Yeah, I'm okay with, like the you know the Warhub run and like you know stuff like that, but um, the thing about the vehicles is like Cornish, you know, probably like you know, moves that in the Ma, they're not fun to control. So you basically handle them and they're like they're driving all over the place. And even though like you know the um, assault in the control room map is the one where you get the interest to the tank, it's also that map where it's like eh, this isn't really a fun either because it's just a tank you just blow up stuff and there's like nothing really to do. Yeah, and it's super um, slow. And there is like some like good good parts like an assault on a control room because I really do like the fact it does have the stealth tips on um, portions of that map where you can basically like, you know stealth up to like the grunts and hit them. Um, if you if the elites don't see you uh, coming, you can basically stealth up him in the back and kill him as well. So there's a lot to basically like about like assault and control room. So I'm you know I'm ranking it a little higher, but it's still like you know got some like you know bad stuff to it as well. So I think that's your third pick is to start on the control room, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is. All right, so getting to my second pick, of course, that's a really a big toss-up between like you know the Sonic Cartographer and like you know um, the yeah. other one, basically Free Guilty, Free Guilty Spark. Yeah. Now I'll note that basically like you know unlike Cornish, I probably would actually say that like you know um, the Sonic Cartographer is actually my number one pick. So let's go over Free for Free Guilty Spark first. Okay. The thing about Free for Free Guilty Spark is that it is like you know the like you know mission to basically introduce the flood, and it did a bang up job basically doing it. But I feel that it could have been actually a lot better if they actually like combined a library with it as well. So this shortened the library to be like you know maybe a quarter of its length for it, perhaps like you just go like through like a couple doors, yeah. and then like you like you know get the key and it's right at the end of like you know um uh, just uh, you know free for a guilty spark. So they merge the two missions basically. Like you basically um sort of like merge the end of where well, you sort of get teleported into the library and sort of like have it continue on rather than it being sort of two of its own missions. Yeah, or like not even teleport, just like, you know, the the, the guy finds you, basically helps you out, and like, you know, just go from there. Yeah. But the thing is, like, you know, um, they could, like, you know, 
done a whole lot better. I basically, like, you know, had, like, that sort of monotonous, like, you know, library, but, you know, they shorten it and had, like, the flood just, like, start to feel, like, really overwhelming at that point. Yeah. So, like, you really get to see, like, you know, oh, shit, this guy's actually r really overwhelming us, so. No, I see. I agree. Yeah. I see. I still think, personally, for me, it's my favorite, but I can understand where you're coming from, because you like the silent car cargo for, for the sandbox nature of it, don't you? The Well, the thing about the, uh, the silent cartographer is that, like, you know, um, it's basically you have like a beach DDD type of ambush type of thing at the start. Yeah. Um, basically you make your way around on like a warthog basically to like, you know, blast off stuff. But what's really great about the mission is that you also get access to the rocket launcher for the first time. And this is like the first like, you know, map where it's actually like, you know, well, the only map really where it's actually like really beneficial to use the rocket launcher. So mm -hmm. you get to like blow away hunters and they get to play like, you know, blow away like, you know, anything else that's really tough, like say the swordman, like, you know, major. And... The thing about like this map is also like the one that's it's, like iconic because basically the one is on a demo, so this is a map that people have played in the past. Yeah. So you have to give it its credit. This is basically the one that actually made like you know Halo really stand out, I think. Yeah. And it basically comes right before pre for Guilty Spark, so it also has a sense of tone for that map as well because up to like you know um, uh, the Sun Cartographer, you're basically just like one man army that's basically unstoppable and can't be stopped by anything. And then, like, it transitions over to Free for Free Guilty Spark, which basically makes it, like, oh, no, you're not the one-man, like, you know, unstoppable army. You are basically, like, you know, um, actually at the mercy of something else. Well, it goes Sonic Cartographer, Assault on the Control Room, then Guilty Spark. Yeah, well, yeah. It, it basically, like, you know, um, it's, it's, it does a really good job, basically, saying that, that tone, basically, because before, like, you know, um, that you basically have Truth and Reconciliation, Halo, and, like, a, a Pillar of Autumn, those maps basically, like, you know, you don't really feel like you're unstoppable because the enemy's just, like, you know, weak. Well, it's the building up of the tempo, isn't it? It's that the, this is why a lot of people find the first half of Halo the best of, of the game. Yeah. Because it's the building up of the tempo where you basically, it's basically to feel like you're doing this full-on assault. You, like, your, your resistance is building up throughout the game, throughout the missions. You're getting more people, more humans. You're capturing more locations. You get to the control room. You're going to get control of Halo, and then the rug is pulled out from underneath your feet, and it's then, oh, this is so much worse. But yeah, the thing is, like, you know, a lot of people, like, here's the thing about, like, books, for example. A lot a lot of people will basically say, like, the first book is always, like, worse than the second book. Yeah. But people seem to forget that the first book is the one that sets the world-building stuff. Yeah. And this is what these, like, first, like, you know, four, um, four missions up to, like, you know, Assault Control and, like, Sonic and Tocqueville are basically doing. Yeah. They're building up, like, the atmosphere of what's basically happening here. Yeah. Which and is... then, like, you get the Guilty Spark, which is basically the second book, where, like, you know, oh, shit, everything goes bad. Well, it's it's the crescendo, it's the high point, isn't it? Which is why I think a lot of people felt let down after Guilty Spark. Um, yeah, the thing about after Guilty Spark is that with the library, it wasn't done well. With, like, two betrayals, it's just, like, you know, a chaotic mess. It's a slog. Yeah, a slog. Keys, it's, like, you know, just, like, uh, annoying, like, you know, responding flood and, like, you know, tight quarters and everything else. Yeah. It's basically a worse version of Truth and Reconciliation. And then we finally get to, like, in the mob, which is, like, yeah. you know, let's just finish this already. Yeah, I mean, the issue, I think, the f in my personal opinion, the reason the last three missions suffer is that they are basically, like, just rehashes of um, Truth Reconciliation, the Soul in the Control Room, and Pillars of Autumn. That's all they really are. They're basically rehashing of those three maps. Yeah, the, and, the thing about the Pillars of Autumn is that it's actually done better, so... Yeah, the Pillars of Autumn one is done, uh, is, is the, uh, more is done better... But, like, Keys and um, the two betrayals, it's just a slog. And it's, it could have been better. They could have been better. Um, and the problem is they're back to back, which makes them even worse. Um, yeah. After the library, for that matter. Yeah. So, but yeah, so. Thanks, you all, folks, for sitting in with our, um, like, sort of post campaign, like, chat about what we thought about Combat Evolved and what maps we liked the most. Um, I mean, leave your thoughts on what you think are the best maps and what order you basically rank them in. Yeah, leave it in the comment sections below, and uh, we'll get back in contact with you. Um, and perhaps we'll do more Halo missions in the future. We'll see. Yeah. In, in, in case, if, if people like us, uh, like like the first series we did, which is basically Combat Halo, or Halo Combat Evolved, we uh, we'll do the second game. Um, assuming but, we can get it working. Yeah, assuming we can get it working. Halo Two is in, infamously finickety these days. Um, I've been Cornus Knight. This has been the Fuax. Yep, one last time. And we'll see you all again next time, folks. Goodbye. See ya.